What's not to love about being a penguin? They're cute, fluffy, and if you believe the movies, incredibly great tap dancers. Despite the adorable hype, it turns out that being a penguin isn't all sunshine, tuxedos, and rainbows. There's a dark side to the lives of our feathered, flightless friends. From bullying to kidnapping, being hunted to being frozen solid, life as a penguin is anything but fun. If you've ever seen a penguin in a sea world or zoo, you'd probably assume they have the ultimate life of luxury. They laze around all day, are fed pre-caught fish, and their only predators are excited kids that bang on the glass. He's boring. Out in the wild, it's a different story. Life is very hard for a penguin. From the moment their egg is laid, all the way through to adulthood and becoming a parent themselves, any step could be their last. So to understand why penguins should be last on your list of birds to be, we gotta go back to the start. What came first, the penguin or the egg? For penguins, things are dangerous even before they're born. Mothers only lay one egg per year, and when the time comes, it's an exercise in expert timing to catch the falling egg. In sub-zero temperatures, newly laid penguin eggs will freeze if not immediately covered in the thick fur of its mother or father. Yep, that's right. There are no deadbeat dads in the penguin world. Both mom and dad take turns keeping their soon-to-be chick warm from the brutal elements of the Antarctic. Extra points if you're an emperor penguin dad. Not only do you take over incubation duties, you also insist on sitting on your egg until it hatches. You'll never find an emperor penguin on Mori Povich, that's for sure. But sometimes, sitting on an egg 24-7 can get a little boring and it's easy to zone out. Get distracted just for a second, and there's always a pesky predator who wants eggs for breakfast. That's an egg! You know, we lose a few eggs every year, it's just nature. If by some miraculous chance, the penguin parents manage to keep their eggs safe for the roughly 65 to 75 day incubation period, a brand new penguin chick will hatch, emerging awkwardly for the first time. Penguin chicks are especially vulnerable, and for the first six months of their life, they rely completely on their parents. While mom or dad go out to sea in search of food to bring back, the starving chick is at the mercy of the elements, predators, and even other penguins. Baby penguin chicks are a tasty treat for skuas, who love to circle and survey penguin colonies from above. Skuas are expert aerial marksmen, able to swoop down and pick out a quick snack without too much trouble. When it's not oversized angry seagulls trying to eat your children, the Antarctic winter is another reason why being a penguin is probably last on my bucket list. Wind chills can drop the temperature to a blood freezing minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. That kind of cold is difficult to even comprehend. And while they have thick, black, heat absorbing feathers and a layer of blubber to insulate them against the cold, sometimes it's too cold, even for a penguin. During particularly nasty storms, it's not uncommon for even an adult penguin left out on their own to freeze to death. To combat this, penguins form huddles. Massive groups of penguins rammed shoulder to shoulder to keep each other warm, a form of social thermoregulation. These huddles can number from just a few hundred penguins all the way up to several million. With a million penguins packed that closely together, you can just imagine the delightful smell from the middle of the huddle. So effective is this huddle that temperatures in the middle can reach a balmy 98 degrees Fahrenheit. It's actually so hot that penguins can't stay in the middle for long. They constantly have to shuffle out of the center to prevent from overheating. Yep, you heard me. Penguins can die from heat stroke in the middle of an Antarctic winter. But under a lot of these shuffling happy feet are new baby chicks tucked nicely into their parents' pouch. For a tiny baby penguin, the march of a million penguin feet may as well be a stampede, and if you fall out of your parents' pouch, there's a real risk of being trampled. Sometimes during these long marches, parents get separated from their chicks, and by the time mom or dad finds them, it's too late. <laughs> Other times, one or more parents might go out to find food, only to never make it back alive. Orphan penguin chicks are way more common than you'd expect, and without mom or dad coming back with fresh fish from the ocean, life expectancy doesn't look great. Fortunately, it seems that every penguin is imbued with some kind of over-eager maternal instinct. 
one so powerful that penguins that failed to breed or lost their chicks to predators or accidents will desperately try to forcefully adopt chicks they see as being orphaned. Sometimes, this helicopter mom insanity is so strong, would-be kidnappers will even try and abduct chicks directly out of their mother's pouch. They'll even begin fighting each other to make sure they're the new parents to this terrified chick. Baby brain is real, folks. Most kidnapped penguin chicks are abandoned not long after being taken, and not just if the ransom isn't paid. As the chicks get older and a little braver, they start to explore the rest of the colony, making new friends, while at the same time getting some gentle behavior corrections from the adults. If they wander into neighboring territories, new chicks are bullied, harassed, and pecked at so they learn their place. What is meant to be a fairly harmless experience can often turn deadly. A little over-exuberance from bully penguins, and tiny chicks are often pecked mercilessly until they stop moving. It's like shooting a toddler just for coming into your room. All of this life-threatening danger, and that's just a penguin's childhood. The real fun begins when penguins decide to venture out into the open ocean. On land, penguins have their distinctive waddle and top the odometer at an intimidating 2 miles per hour. But once they get to sea, penguins flip on their afterburners, with Gen 2 penguins reaching underwater speeds of up to 22 miles per hour. This makes them expert hunters, catching and killing everything from krill and squid to small fish and crustaceans. But while they're foraging around in the deep, other sets of eyes and teeth are there too, waiting for an opportunity to strike. First up, seals. Known affectionately as the dogs of the sea, these slippery predators hang around the ice shelf waiting for an afternoon snack to drop right in. Seals can jump up on land, but just like the penguin, they're slow and clumsy so catching one by surprise is easier said than done. Seals are better off hiding in wait, ready to pounce. They're effective hunters too, almost always returning with a penguin meal to eat on the spot. Being eaten is an everyday occurrence for a penguin, and it's probably the reason why the rest of the colony will often watch in macabre fascination. Seal attacks aren't always 100% effective though, and injured penguins can stumble back onto shore in a daze before succumbing to their injuries. Sea lions are a seal's bigger, angrier cousin, and they too like to snack on the occasional penguin who's trying to get home to their families. Using crashing waves over headland rocks as cover, this beast of the ocean easily grabs a penguin or two, crushing them in his powerful jaws and swallowing them whole. Killer whales, or orcas, are another mammal with a taste for penguin meat. Orca pods will work together hunting in packs to drive a school of penguins toward shallow waters where they aren't as agile, before eating the hapless bird whole. Oh, and of course you can't forget the predator that will literally eat anything, sharks. When great whites are taking a break from seafood for a change, they can be tempted to pop a few bite-sized penguins to cure those hunger pains. And while they do go and hunt penguins on purpose, it would be quite easy for these giant monsters of the ocean to simply swallow one without even noticing. If everything in nature is out to kill you, surely it's safe to come home and relax amongst your own kind, right? Well, maybe not. Fierce territorial disputes amongst some penguins can often lead to a vicious battle to the death. Winner gets the house. And if that's not sad enough, the final thing that can kill a penguin is loneliness. Yep, penguins are sensitive souls that mate for life. Once they find their special little soulmate penguin, there's no cheating, no home wrecking no second marriages. It's one mate for life with these guys. Unfortunately, nature can be cruel, and hunting expeditions can often end up in one partner never coming home. Penguins will mourn the loss of a loved one, and this grieving can be so profound the penguin left behind will often refuse to eat and starve to death as a result. So after watching this video, if you're still wanting to be a penguin, you really are a sucker for punishment, and I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, and if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and tap that big red button and notification bell. See you all next time.